Hey guys, welcome back. BDCKR here. We're back with season six, episode 11 of our P and Q and C and A and T videos. That stands for podcasts, questions, comments, answers, and talking. Uh, this video is going to be a little bit different, or this video slash uh, audio depending on how you're listening to this, is going to be a little bit different, especially because we recommend that you do actually uh, look consume this in the video format because uh, this episode is going to be a little bit more focused on kind of back to uh, grassroots where we uh, would actually comment on the fight a little more as it was happening because this is uh, Batman Ninja Catwoman and we are going through some of the new content, uh, Ladder 9, uh, right, so the ninth page, new page. I remember when it used to be six pages only. Yeah. Bonus battle six was as high as you could go, and now we are on the ninth page, which is brand new here. Yeah, and we're so... We're not starting at the very beginning, but we're finishing it off. Yeah, so we're going to be looking at uh, just sort of how the new Catwoman can really tear through uh, enemies. So we will be making not infrequent reference to that. So this is still going up on the audio feed just for posterity's sake and for anybody who, you know, still decides to listen to it that way. But first and foremost, I think uh, this is uh, content better consumed in its video form. Uh, if you want to listen to a different episode, though, in podcast and you are here on video, you can find links in the description on all the uh, major podcasting platforms like Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all that in the description. Right. So I think to start out, did you want to start out talking about some the stuff you learned this week or did you want to okay, start so, with a question? <laughs> so I don't mind as much. Normally, I, I try to maybe bring it back to injustice i mean lately we've been rambling a bit but mm -hmm. because this a is bit, a, actually a little brand new bit a, a little bit into the weeds i like that expression i'm glad you taught me that um but because we're doing so much more visually i don't feel as bad about going off mm. and i should point out before i even get into that part of the setup for uh batman ninja catwoman i mentioned this when we did the sort of not even sneak preview because she's available now mm. you can get her in the nth metal pack mm -hmm. but i guess it is sort of a sneak preview of how good she can be once you finally have uh, 25 copies of her to get her to Elite 7. And also once you and, have all the alloy. Oh, uh, we could probably talk a bit more about that in the recap, but it actually takes, for how she is now, it takes more than 35,000 Valorium alloy mm. to max out her specials, her passive, and then her dark power specials. Yeah, so it's a sneak preview of how she plays at peak form, even if it's not a sneak preview of just the character itself, although for a lot of yeah. people, uh, this will be the first they've seen of her. And maybe I should speak a little bit to the Valorium Alloy, too, because mm. we're used to talking about power credits and currency that where, you know, you might have a few million saved. Mm -hmm. Valorium Alloy cannot be purchased in the store. Mm -hmm. So all the script kiddies who are using programs to get currency and not have to pay, like real cash for them, like they usually sell it, are not going to be able to get Valorium Alloy. So if they have the new metals, they will have them not maxed out and i did a calculation based on our original video with uh the merciless yeah and it takes like that thirty five thousand. when we've done we've got an account where we've played phantom zone and played every single repeat that was available you know spend 50 nth metal to play it again and get yeah. more valorium alloy and that account has only seventeen thousand. Mm, that's not a lot at all actually that's less than half what you need to see. I mean, when you've got it, when you look online and you see the hackers, it's so obvious who's been hacking, who's just been uh, using programs, script kiddies, um, because yeah, there's just no way that you can have a team of two or three metal characters that are all maxed out with five or six times as much Valorian metal or alloys that's available. Holy crap! Look at Catwoman. Yeah, like really? she is just yeah. She goes through crazy fast. Yeah, and I mean, to be fair, the, the rate that we're getting Valorium Alloy sort of makes sense, especially considering the fact that even if they would I think, gotten a metal character on every pack opening, we still wouldn't be in a place where we'd have one of them maxed out yet for right. our, for with our Nth Metal anyways. So it seems like the rate that we're getting those are, you know, not totally out of whack. Right. Oh, and the other thing I want to point out is that her gear loadout is what we were talking about when we did the preview. Um... And I think it's as close to ideal as possible because once you've got her passive triggering for 21 seconds instead of six, you don't have to worry so much. I mean, once you've got the first tag in, yeah, that first 21 seconds can be enough to knock out somebody. That knockout gives you another 21 seconds. And once you've knocked them out enough times, you build up two bars of power and she can do a second special too if the fight, you know, 
I've got I'm doing air quotes right now, which you can't see, drags on. Like for her, a fight that's dragging out, like seriously, she's already knocked somebody out. She's bought her second twenty one seconds. Yeah. And so the Astro Harness is perfect because when she tags in, she is not vulnerable. So any um, entry hazards, I like that term. That's a Pokemon term, right? Yeah, it is. Uh, like, uh, oh, God, uh, poison barbs and stuff. Is poison right. barb the move? Po- yeah, that's right. I think so. And like, like Stealth that. Rock or something like that? Yeah. So she's she's got the Astro Harness, so that's often enough to build up at least one bar of power. Mm-hmm. The Soul Taker gives her... Um, it's really there for the unblockable chance. You mm-hmm. don't really care about the uh, attack drain or attack steal, except, I mean, you look at the opponents. I mean, it seems like she's just mowing through them, but look at their stats. When You can really appreciate how good she is when you see what her, the, the stats of the opponents are. And they were talking well in excess of 100,000 uh, health each. Yeah, so just just crazy damage output. Just really impressive to watch, genuinely. Yeah. And the overpowered pill is just to max out her um, crit chance on basic attacks with one gear. Mm. And somebody suggested using her claws because it gives her a special two boost, but I don't even really care about her special two damage. I look like this. She's doing 20-something thousand for a tap attack, and the combo ender is doing two hits of 40,000 each. Yeah. Yeah, the the main advantage of her special two is to refresh her uh, ability if for some reason right. you need it, and right. not actually necessarily just inherent damage output. Although that's always a decent bonus, it's it's her basic damage is really where you're she's geared around. Yeah, I mean it's tempting though too, right? Because I mean mm-hmm. the the habit I've gotten into with all the other guys where they've got um, where you're playing on the special two for because there's a special specialist um, that you just want to do it over and over again. And so you want to, you know, use Tantu Totem. In this case, she's she doesn't need any of that. She's just mm. coming in and back in the old days, right before Tantu Totem, she's just wailing on people. Yeah, it's pretty spectacular, mm-hmm. actually. Um, so all right, so this week I learned. Okay, dash cam. They're way more popular now. They're a lot less expensive than they used to be. A lot of people have dash cams, right? Yeah, yeah. So the problem with dash cams, well, there's a couple problems if you live in in a cold climate. One is that the leaving it in the car in the heat during the summer, and I'll get back to the cold climate part, it degrades the lithium-ion battery. Mm-hmm. So its capacity isn't as good, it doesn't perform as well, which means that in winter when it gets really cold, that lower capacity means that if it's overnight in the, in the freezing cold, um, you wake up in the morning and it's not going to actually be uh, have enough ma- uh, battery power to have remembered what the date or time is. Oh, yeah. Right, so that's the trouble I'm running into. You know, after first year or so, that's it's happened to every single dash cam that we've had. But the other problem with dash cams is that the the solid state memory of the micro SD cards mm-hmm. they're getting rewritten over and over again, right? Oh yeah. So you yeah. don't want a small card, you want a big card, mm-hmm. because then each si- single cell that stores memory ends up being all right. So that was fast. That was the uh, fourth ladder so we're going to get through mm-hmm. all the i mean these actually are challenging if you didn't have a really good team these would be really challenging mm-hmm. so just as a, I'm, I'm pointing out what's on the screen for people who are listening to it so we've got a combined maybe four hundred fifty thousand health that we need to get through and we're going to get through it in probably less than half a minute mm-hmm. with just basic attacks all right so anyways so then you want a big card that way it doesn't uh go through right. as fast so it doesn't rewrite the same cells over and mm-hmm. over as fast. So the bigger they are, the the card is the longer it lasts. I mean, the problem is and economically you also you're paying get, for it. You also get like a longer lag time, right? You can store more video on it. That's true, but I don't know if you want to because at the point where it crashes, and let's say you're in a big enough crash to damage the dash cam, yeah. If it was recording and not in the and not having saved it, there's a chance that, there's a bigger chance that you lose the data. You know, the same way when if injustice crashes while it's communicating with the server, sometimes it can screw up your progress. Oh, I guess so. Yeah. So you got to find that balance, right? Because mm. while it's saving it, it's losing like a, a second or two. And if you wait too long, if you're in a crash, there's a chance that if the dash cam is damaged, you lose your footage for the last however that's, long you've been recording. That's true. All right. So I bought a new card. Mm. They were on sale. It was 64 gigs. And guess what? What? Dash cam wouldn't recognize it. Oh, crap. Do you have any guesses about what happened? Um... No, is it newer? Is like one of them new and one of them old? Is there some sort of like compatibility issue? Uh, that's pretty good. Cause see, my gut instinct when I stick in something like that and I think, oh, it's not working. I think, oh, is it defective? 
But that's sort of a useless um, avenue to go, right? Because if it is defective, there's nothing you can do except send it back. See, I was assuming that it's not defective because you said you learned something new. So I'm assuming that there was a solution. Yes. So I tried to format it in the dash cam. So most dash cams have, when you go in the settings, you can um, format the card. Mm. And I thought maybe it just needed to be format. Wouldn't, wouldn't recognize it. Well, it just wouldn't do anything. Yeah. And then I remembered that when I've previously tried to put um, large files on USB keys... Oh, actually, the other thing I should mention about Batman Ninja Cat Woman as I'm watching it is that um, by put, giving your overpower pill and focusing only on tap combo, you are also draining the power on top of what her passive does, mm. and you are replenishing your health in the off chance she gets hit in between the invulnerabilities of the Astro Harness. Okay, so that's pretty good. Yes. So that's why, to me, I think this is sort of the ideal Loda that takes advantage of her because anybody can be a special specialist with Tanty Totem and Master's Death Card. Nobody else can do basic damage quite like... I want to call her... I keep on wanting to call her animated because it's weird to me that built into her name is one of the other characters' names. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And if... When well, you start saying Batman Ninja, it's like Batman Returns Catwoman, right? So it's always... Anyways, sorry. Uh, another digression. Yeah, so but, um, it didn't work when you tried to format it and then you remembered... All right, so when I've tried to put large files on USB keys before, um, certain standards such as FAT32 don't allow anything more than four gigabytes, but NTFS will. Mm. So I popped that baby into the computer and the computer recognized it. And so I thought I'd try to format it as FAT32 because that's the older standard, right? But it didn't even give me that option. The only two options were NTFS and XFAT. Mm. So I'm stuck again, even though I think I understand the problem better. It's a different file system, right? Yeah. So clearly the dash cam is cheaper and older. It definitely recognizes FAT2, which is what the 32 gig card is. Because when when I did a little bit more research, it the when you want to fat format as FAT32, it turns out that Windows won't recognize, or sorry, Windows won't allow FAT32 um formatting on anything that's larger than 32 gigs why is that i don't know i think it, it might be is it that the, the the file system that it uses might have more trouble keeping track of all the stuff on such a big capacity card i don't know uh, yeah i don't know either that's interesting though so then i um it turns out there's third-party apps that will allow it mm. And one okay. of them is AOMEI, which is... Remember when we were changing over the hard drives to SSDs? Yeah, yeah. And there's one hard drive that just wouldn't go with Macrium. The one that I'm currently using. Yes, and but it, it worked with AOMEI. Mm. So we've used it before to clone a disk. I... I also, use... I also had to uninstall Macrium because um, it kept on asking me to update it over and over again oh. and being really annoying about its push notifications, which is extra uh, frustrating for a program that didn't function <laughs> for what we needed it to do. <laughs> On that computer specifically. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, you know, AOMEI totally formatted it. I picked FAT32, which Windows would not allow me to do, and it works in the dash cam. There we go. So the, 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 I guess the too long didn't read version is that if memory cards or sticks work in one device but not another, it's probably a limitation on the, or it's, pro, it's possibly a limitation of the device not recognizing certain file systems. Mm. And okay. even if your computer can't change the file system, there is third party software that can. There we go. That's interesting. So yeah. that's uh, probably not too relevant to most people most of the time, but who knows, maybe... Uh, just like you sort of remembered offhand, some people remember this video if they're having trouble with, uh, or even the knowledge, like the idea USB. that you can fix it is enough, right? Yeah. Like my problem always has been that you know you learn these things and you don't really have anywhere to share them, and it feels like the knowledge, not the, so much the knowledge, because the knowledge always stays there, but the process for getting the knowledge gets lost. Yeah. Which is is kind of a shame. Yeah, you just sort of forget because then it's just a problem that's been fixed and not like right. a an active thing that you've just worked your way through right yeah all right so okay interesting maybe we'll get to the first uh injustice question and i've got a few other things i want to talk about that that have sort of excited me in the last week or so but you know mm. yeah okay hey, hey, and you did and you did uh pretty well in your exams oh yeah yeah, yeah. uh did not bad i got a 95 87 84 and 80 uh in my exam so i'm feeling i'm feeling decent about those results that's pretty, that's pretty cool. much where i want them to be yeah yeah congratulations man yeah thank you appreciate it 
Uh, <laughs> anyways, I think we've digressed enough. Uh, we can actually start talking about maybe a little bit of injustice briefly uh, before we, I'm sure, go back. Um, our first question comes from Ivalo Kev. Oh, I don't know how to pronounce his name. It's I V A I L O K O E V. I have no idea. I hope I hope they come back in the comments and let us know how to pronounce it phonetically. I'm always interested in names where they have non-standard combinations and are clearly not North American Anglo names. Yeah, yeah. This is definitely like European or Russian or something. Slavic. Slavic. I think that's the term where that that area of, uh, you know, like near Russia, like Ukraine, that kind of stuff. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they, their question for us is, Hey, I've been playing the game for a bit now and I've got a few characters to elite five and can clear bonus battle six easily with three teams. I was wondering if at this point it's better to spend coins on gear or rather just get a few more characters to elite seven. And, um, I think there's sort of like long and short answers. The long answer is always, it depends. I think the short answer is, uh, yeah, if you, if you haven't, uh, gotten much gear yet you probably want to actually start spe- um, funneling some money into gear for sure yeah i and, think that's always the right answer getting good gear but and it's, then it becomes a question of which gear and how do you get it yeah yeah um so I, I, like we said before uh the fact that you can easily grind it with three teams means probably that there's a decent chunk of time you can play all at once without having to stop um and yeah. so the only reason i would i think get more characters up it right now at the exact point you're at is if either you don't like your teams very much right now mm-hmm. or if you are playing and you are with three teams though i think by the time you get through the third team you're almost ready for the first team again right? oh yeah oh yeah so that's pretty sort of self-sustaining so um so i'd say yeah at this point funnel some funnel some money into gear because you want to be uh, as good or better than the teams that you're facing in online in terms of gear score. And I think that's yeah. that's sort of, you want gear up until that point right now is what you want to start investing in. Yeah, because the, the, the question is fixed on the single player offline mode. Yeah. And for that, just absolute uh, improved characters are enough to help you. And even though we're showing the ninth screen, there's not a lot of benefit. What we're seeing th- by finishing the ninth screen is that we're not getting much in the way of bonuses. Yeah. And so it's probably not worth it. And then if you can just, you know, I think bonus battle seven and bonus battle eight, you do get some special stuff. I think one is a uh, killer croc and one might be the, um, maybe gauntlets of Azrael. Mm. But you know, they're not an important enough, I think to make it worth it. And every other aspect of the game, other than this. So we're talking, um, survivor mm-hmm. and a multiplayer and to a lesser extent, breakthrough. Yeah. Um, I mean, breakthrough. You really only want if you want to get everybody up to level ten. So then it's a, a separate consideration, right? Because it, what mm-hmm. it does is it helps you with the other screens, or sorry, the other kind of play modes. Mm-hmm. And multiplayer, matchmaker is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you raise your guys, you're going to be facing stronger guys. If you don't raise your guys but give them better gear, you'll still be facing the same guys. Yeah, that aren't so good, you know, right? That they, they're matched towards your current um, status or ability. Yeah, and uh, Survivor also does that. It scales up or down depending on on what guys you're playing with. Yeah, and so but no matter what field you're playing in, uh, gear will help you. Gear will help you single player. Gear will help you multiplayer. So I think it, depending on how much you have, if you've already invested a lot, it's possible that you don't need to anymore. But as a, it, I think investing in gear at the point that you're at does actually seem like a pretty good. Uh, use of your time and it's a better way to g- actually get more gear on multiplayer because mm. there's so many multiplayer exclusives now that you do really want to rank highly enough to get multiple copies of some really good gears yeah and then all the purchasing of gear packs you've been doing will be giving you the shards to maybe uh, get them upgraded which is hard to remember we've spent so long uh, with so much excess gear that it, it's not really a factor for us. We've sort of had the privilege of being able to ignore uh, shards for a very right, so long time now. Do you remember? All right, that was only 14 seconds. That first tag in would have been enough wow. for Catwoman, and we just did a... Not including the other two knockouts, that would have been more than enough to get through everything. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing. When gear first came out, 
the amount of shards that you would get wouldn't matter whether you evolved it or not, or whether oh, you oh yeah or, yeah you would just get a static it. number, right? And so I mean we didn't know it was going to change, but like a lot of other things, we didn't bother um, shattering it. Yeah, we basically we just shattered it as we needed it, and that turned out to be one one of the smarter things that we did because at some point they changed over. I, I can't remember when. Right, so you get way more shards if it was promote or if it was fused, and it was um, I, I can't remember the term for. And there's so many different terms. You know, like, uh yeah, I think so. Oh, this is a problem because uh, Blackest Night f- uh, Flash. Oh, wasn't a problem. I was thinking because he's got that passive that lets him dodge a bunch of basics, right? And he yeah. that leaves you vulnerable. So I was tempted to maybe do a few specials, but um, just sort of motored through them. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. And then uh, I think they actually had it like even just too far pushed towards giving you more shards because I think they fixed it and rebalanced it lower afterwards. But it was um, it was too late because we had already he went a little bit wild on it and shattered an absolute ton of gear and yeah. had a ton of shards because we were like testing and we were um, like, wow, this is like way more than it's ever been. We weren't sure if it was intentional or not. So we shattered a ton all at once just to bank them up just in case. Oh related bit of advice is that it the the cheaper the one and a half and the two and a half star gears are and we say half like i mean for people who are just one of all the two new. two of all the three so right so uh, that's two and a half is two turns into three star gear right um that it's worth promoting or fusing even the lower ones because you are more likely to get them in the gear locker and in uh survivor and it means that you're you're going to be getting more shards. So in the short term, you'll be out because you, it takes shards and coins, power credits to fuse them. Yeah. But in the long term, each time you get it, you're more likely to be getting it back and mm. getting back a fully fused and evolved gear gives you way more shards in the long term. Yeah, yeah. So that's actually... The, the, luckily, the, that's one of the few systems in Injustice where you're getting random stuff and you are actually rewarded for... Uh, getting stuff that you've already gotten a lot of copies of because right. ideally uh in an ideal situation you would get uh you know like one copy of every gear but then uh you would get the most number of copies of gears that you actually had already gotten yeah. um because or the ones that you'd have for longest and upgrade them so it really it, it it doesn't matter if you're getting a brand new gear or an old gear except uh it, it helps you if you're getting a gear that you've already gotten uh and and like maxed out or right. put put more resources into so the more resources right. you put into a gear the better off you are if you get a duplicate of it right yep all so, right so anything else you want to say about that uh i think that because it's pretty narrow and an early question but i think mm-hmm. the short answer you're, you're right is almost always uh yeah. if you have a choice get gear mm-hmm. yeah that sounds like some sort of slang rude thing you say get gear Mm. You know, the way people say, get good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's always the answer, right? When somebody's having, not even complaining, but just pointing out something that's flawed in a game, there's always going to be somebody. Some There's some guy, some, somebody always says, get good. Oh, yeah, like, get better at the game. Yeah, that's one of those uh, one of those jokes about uh, Dark Souls. Whenever anybody says it's hard, you just say, get good. <laughs> <laughs> people are like, oh, oh, the game's too hard. And it's like, stop complaining, just get better, which I don't think is actually... Um, the right response, but yeah. it is uh, it is a common one. I think it's it's kind of ascended to the status of a joke, where it's really actually hard to tell uh, people's intentions when they say it. <laughs> yeah, which does not help things. Where you can't tell how frustrated to be with this person, oh. um, <laughs> creating is a hostile post- environment for new players. Th- there's something you know how there's like uh, Godwin's law for everything. If there's a long enough conversation, eventually it degenerates into somebody accusing somebody of being Hitler or Nazi. There's Poe's law where uh, sometimes where with satire, sometimes you can't uh, distinguish. If you're satirizing something that's awful, sometimes you can't get away from it almost looking exactly like what you're trying to uh, satirize. Yeah, there are there are some things that I see that is you you have to you like you almost can't imagine them not being satire. Like it's it's almost like painful to imagine somebody being genuine about them, and I you can't tell if you just hope it's satire or if it's so ridiculous that it, it, that you're like no, it's got to be satire, right? And like uh, yeah. Yeah. it's it's really difficult to kind of tease that out. There's um I see yeah some some really kind of. Uh, 
unbelievable stuff, especially with like some like stuff like uh, I to call a specific group out like anti anti vax movement stuff. Oh yeah, right. Okay. Like some yeah. of that stuff that you see where they're like, um, you know, uh, like talking about like children that they've lost because they didn't vaccinate them due to some disease and you're like and they're like oh you know i'm like i glad i stayed true to my principles or whatever and you just read that and you go oh my god like i just i sincerely hope that this is satire right you know what i mean like um no i know exactly what you mean yeah where where you see stuff like that and you're like i can't i can't tell if i just really really want this to not be true or if it's so ridiculous that it can't be true or what (laughs) where exactly the motivation is but i i like it's it's difficult to think some things are genuine yes even if even if there's no real indication other than the fact that it would be insane if it was genuine there's no other indication actually like within the text itself to indicate that it's not genuine yeah Uh, i'm gonna just point out on the screen we almost never see numbers like that where lots of times when you have a special specialist because a lot of the damage gets wasted. So if they've got one health and you do a, a, a part of your hit does like 100,000 damage, you get credit for that at the end. She is in less than 20 seconds getting between 500 and I think there's one that was just a couple of fights ago, 880,000 yeah. uh, damage done That's on basic insane. attacks mostly. That's pretty insane. It's almost yeah. It, it's almost wild to have that much health to go through, even in the first place. Yeah, and that she can just motor through. So I just want to point that out before we get to the next question. Yeah, uh, our next question comes from Carlos uh, Chimeo, and they ask, "How would you rate the complete Earth Two team now that Necron Scythe has been added to the game, and is it worth using Killer Croc's gear to elevate the stun chance on Hawk Girl's combo ender to optimize her passive?" Hmm. So the general principle, I think the, the, the big answer, the big picture answer is the Earth 2 team is so much better with Necrons. I'm going to mispronounce this. Ooh, there's no team. Scythe. Hold on. Yes. Scythe? Scythe. Scythe. I, Scythe. I believe. I believe it's Scythe. I'm still, okay. I think I've been relatively consistent with that, although I'm sure I've actually messed up the pronunciation once or twice, but I, I, th- right. I think that's it. We'll call it Necrons uh, sharp thingy. Um, Necrons uh, Pokey? Blade. Necrons. Yeah, Blade sounds... Because there's, you know, um, Blade of the War God, too. There actually is a Blade. That's true. Uh, you know, it's it reminds me of Game of Thrones. You know, point, uh, stick them with the pointy end. All right, so this is what we just saw in Injustice, where people... Uh, the, the, on the ninth screen, the last fight, uh, I think it's Battle 62 of that ladder, is messed up, where everybody else is reporting exactly the same thing where you can choose to fight but there's nobody there you pick it and it'll just crash the game which we just saw so we're just restarting it now um Mm. so as of this moment there are there used to be only one now there are two gears that boost damage against a stunned opponent cloak of destiny and necron's sharp pointy thing um and without them stun it gives you the opportunity to land an unblocked combo or special, which isn't bad, but isn't enough to be a game changer, right? Yeah. Uh, but you know, if you are, if you can actually increase the amount of damage, right? So Earth Two Hawk Girl gives a chance at stun with combo ender or specials. Earth Two Flash gives all his uh, Earth Two teammates a chance to stun on Tagen, and he also auto crits against stunned opponents. So potentially you have a team, an Earth Two team where all three will stun um, mm. on tag in hawk girl could stun with her combo enders and up until now you could only you had to pick one person to take advantage of the stun mm. so um i mean if you can get the combo ender to trigger a lot then yeah you could totally justify taking up a gear slot uh for working on the combo and yeah. i've always been a, a fan of unblockable chance on basics especially on all of the flashes where you get two chances because when you swipe the first swipe triggers both of the hits yeah right so you only need to swipe twice and you get three hits everybody else you have to swipe three times to get the three hit combo yeah it's like heavy combo it's really it's a one-two punch but it's a one-two punch with a single swipe right um so Here's the thing. It's even that makes it even better on defense, right? For Necron's Scythe and um, 
So we really do need to make sure that there's yeah, one way to pronounce I, it because we've been saying I, it enough, and I think we've been had that discussion enough that I think we we owe it to ourselves and the listening uh, audience to pronounce that word correctly. I think this every time there's a bunch of songs I hear on the radio. I think this every time I think I I really should learn what the words are instead <laughs> of singing what I think they are, and then by the time I get out of the car, I forget to look it up. Okay, so, I'm gonna look it up right now. Okay. Um, so Keep going. About, I won't have right, to so, watch a video because I know how to read IPA. So it's it's um it's even better on defense because if your if Hawk Girl does her combo ender right uh, when the AI plays it, you block it'll still complete. So getting um setting them up with two of the guys with um a stun a gear that boosts stun damage and giving um unblockable chance on on both of them that is going to be a spectacular team for defense um and so i guess i oh i, I guess i should have been more specific because killer crocs gear gives a chance to uh at unblockables mm. right so i think i can't remember now i think there is a a chance of unblockable so it makes it even better and that combined with the stun chance totally worth it Mm. Okay, I I have I have the results back. All not right. a, not 100% sure that this is accurate, but I this is what seems like the consensus is. So, scythe should be pronounced scythe, although some people say scythe. So, it can be uh the the kind of variation in how you pronounce it is whether or not it's th or the at the end. So, um it's it's a th sound that's either voiced or voiceless. Okay. So, um the That's t- silent c though. Um, it's a silent C, yeah. So it's scythe or scythe. Um, so it's either like the th in the, then, there, or that, or the th like in thing, thumb, or bath. Um, okay. And that's the that's the variation in how people pronounce it. But there, it's not scythe for all sure. Right. It's yeah, totally. scythe right, so or gonna... scythe. All right, yeah. It, it's not... All I need to know is ignore the C. Yeah, ignore the C for sure. Silent C. That is that is definitely true. So you got a little bit of wiggle room, but not the kind of wiggle room that you were Not where at. I thought it was. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. was aiming in the wrong wrong direction. <laughs> yeah, you were. Uh, that's okay. You were pronouncing it uh, like you would Latin. I was pronouncing it like somebody who's never actually heard it. But I, I read a lot, but clearly I don't talk enough with people who have the same kind of vocabulary. Or who talk about scythes a lot. That's true. It's very specific. It's not so much the broad vocabulary as it is that specific word that is yeah. supporting us. Yeah, okay. so there we go. That's a, that is a sort of answer to at least put to put to bed your pronunciation of it. Yes, yes. Um, the next question comes from iProfit Three. Here, actually, this is not a uh, question. This is more of a comment, and this is one of those ones that I'm hoping uh, maybe gets on us on a little bit of a tangent because I don't have too much to say about it specifically. Uh, iProfit says the results this time at the Academy Awards were pretty weird. Almost everyone who won, uh, oh, sorry, almost everyone won who shouldn't have won, uh, especially best VFX. It's crazy how Infinity War wasn't the winner when it was clearly the best VFX, not just in the previous year, but far better than a whole lot of other VFX movies. The speech for the best picture did get cut off in the middle, but yeah, I guess he really wasn't going to thank the people you mentioned. Uh, edit also want to add, I haven't seen or heard of Green Book or Olivia Colman, both of who received two of the biggest author oscars sorry i said authors but so uh i profit i guess just generally felt like the oscars were a little weird this time which um i i think is fair with the no host everything it seems like they're trying a bunch of new stuff okay Uh, i want to share something with you though yeah you got to look up all right so i actually i'd seen olivia coleman before but not in movies there's something there's a some british comedy thing called number wang what and is that? <laughs> it is some bizarre thing. I think I, I uh, Mark Evanier, he's a writer. He does comics and he does uh, animation stuff. And he did one of my favorite cartoons, Dungeons and Dragons, way back when he did the original mm. pilot. Um, mm. So he's, a couple times he's posted this thing, Number Wang, and it is totally bizarre. And it is weird and funny. And Olivia Coleman is in that. And it's so these two people. what is it? What is it about? It's, it's a parody of um, game shows. Mm. where you have no idea what they're doing and all they're doing is like rattling off a bunch of numbers until somebody wins for no explicable reason at all 
Yeah. And it's just funny and over the top. I mean, I, I can't watch a lot of the episodes because <laughs> it's a lot of the same thing. But as, Wait, as so, like, there's, so there's like no discernible rule. Like you don't know what the rules are. You just got to say numbers until you get the number that wins it for you. Seriously. <laughs> and is it just, <laughs> is it just random? And so is it literally just fully guessing? It's like, cause it I feels like, I, like they're it, not guessing. They, they have, they clearly know, like they're saying it with confidence. The people that are pretending to be contestants, they yeah. are saying their numbers emphatically and with confidence. That's I don't I don't know if I can process what that is okay. fully. You know, what? I'm gonna put a link. <laughs> I'm gonna send you the link, and I'm gonna put one in the description for anybody who wants to see it. But I think it's just hilarious. Like it's just so I. What's great to me was her speech was the best moment I think of the mm. um, Oscars to me. Like most of it was kind of boring. I'm glad they didn't actually do all those production numbers because they aren't always great. They're sort of hit and miss. Yeah. But it's the moments like that where clearly she was happy to be there. She was off guard. She was surprised. She didn't expect to win. And she was, she, it, it was just so joyful. Mm. Yeah, she was very excited. I actually, I watched a video of her uh, acceptance speech and she was super excited and almost like apologetic because she like f- for her speech, right? As it was right. happening. The part where she was talking to Glenn Close. Yeah. That, and she was saying, um, yeah, you know, you, you're like my hero or, so, or hero, heroine, hero, hero or something. And just, I didn't expect to, to meet you like this, something like that. Yeah. I can't remember what it was, but she was clearly, I mean, she was clearly grateful. She and she was like, had... oh, you know, I'm sorry if I forget people, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. like it, it did feel a little bit like sort of off the cuff almost, right? Yeah. Like not like prepared some, obviously you don't show up to the Oscars as a nominee without any idea of what you're going to say if you win right 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 or i think i guess maybe you do but uh probably not i i would say is that that's probably a safe assessment but yeah no it was just very sort of like um genuine yeah yeah and it didn't feel very manufactured it felt a little too um like not smooth to be manufactured right it wasn't like a kind of like a fake like quirky or anything it really felt like she was just like emotional and like a little like um obviously very happy but almost like a little like upset <laughs> just <laughs> maybe the... high yeah i don't know not upset just like very very flustered right like just on the yeah. verge of like it like you... <laughs> losing control yeah if she had if she had like cried i would have been genuinely unsure if it was like a happy cry or just like an overwhelmed one you know what i mean like yeah yeah Oh yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. I want to point out too. I just noticed while on the screen, one of the other reasons why this gear combo on her is so good. Um, so you see that she takes on the last fight. She she took damage a bunch of times, and she would have probably been knocked out. Except the astro harness invulnerability saved her. And while she had the invulnerability, she got an unblocked um, combo ender, and it did enough damage that it could. Um... Oh, too bad. This is I think this is random tagging. It did enough mm. damage that it replenished almost all her health each time. Mm. And so, and and if you don't do a combo ender and you need to do a second special and you get it un, un, um, unblocked, then you also get a chance at getting your health back because of the Soul Taker Sword. Yeah. So I'm going to point out why I think this is... Well, listen, if anybody else is using her, um, maybe in the comments I'd like to see or like to hear what you guys have to say about what a great gear loadup but i think to me this is the ideal for the way i want to play her yeah yeah i I think i think that's probably a fair assessment it looks like it's uh pretty it's definitely effective right i mean i was gonna say it looks like it's pretty effective but it's not even oh my god one million something oh wow yeah that's Uh, that's some major stats all right, so while we're on the topic of the Oscars, one of the big things that seems to be brewing when I read the paper and stuff is that there's a lot of talk about how the um, there's this conflict now between traditional um, cinema and streaming services mm. like Netflix. Mm. And what counts? Because Netflix, technically, you know, it could win Emmys because it's short and episodic like television. But then it's also got all these movies that have never had a theatrical release. Or if they do, they have a really sort of limited one just to qualify, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, and there she gets saved by Astro Harness. I saw... um... I don't know if I don't know if you've seen these ads. Uh, uh, this is totally non sequitur too, but I've seen some ads recently that have been using like um, 
movies and i'm assuming movies that were no wait ladybird was old i saw an ad that used uh, a scene from ladybird for google um did, did you watch ladybird i did i did um this is not really a spoiler this is like the first five minutes um so i guess skip forward uh but i'm gonna do a quick description of it in the next minute it's like first five minutes it is a little bit shocking um but it's, it's not a spoiler where she's having the fight with her mom and then she just dive rolls out of the car oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and they were using that um and it was like but it was an ad for google um because it was like using google assistant to like call a lift or something like that or like an uber and then she dove roll out of the car because it was like your uber is here um or your uber is on its way and I, I just i found that really bizarre but ladybird ladybird was last year wasn't it uh i think so or was it this year no, it was last year. It was last year. Yeah, I no, think it and won, I just, it, it was a right? really, it was a really bizarre ad. It was meant to like, yeah, it was 2017. Um, it was, it was a really bizarre ad because it like just totally used a clip from Lady Bird and then incorporated some like extra footage where um, Lady Bird was on her phone and then all of a sudden it was like an ad for Google and I was confused. <laughs> I was I was very confused, okay. and it feels like that coincides pretty well with like Oscar season. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just because especially that was like, I I don't know if that won or if it was just nominated, but I know that that was like an Oscar, um, like contender, right? Right. Right. And okay. I it was just it was just like a really kind of weird like like <laughs> I've seen this before. Like that's oh that's from that's from Lady Bird. What okay. are they? Why am I seeing a clip from Lady Bird? Oh, they're trying to sell me a phone. No, they're selling me google are they like i don't you know what i mean like i don't yeah. like i almost also didn't understand what product i was supposed to purchase after seeing it you know like i don't know yes. what that was supposed to convince me to do even that is exactly the feeling i had this was years ago and i used to listen to the radio all the time falling asleep and maybe have the radio as my alarm yeah. and there was you know being half asleep listening to this so brian adams you know who brian adams is uh canadian rocker uh, summer of 69 oh yeah, yeah, yeah. okay okay for all right sure. so um oh sorry he, it was it's a ad for a google pixel okay uh, so for the phone so it wasn't just for google it was specifically for the google pixel okay, okay. never mind that makes a little bit more sense i mean it's still that cause, so, so this is the same bizarre feeling he did a, a song that was a medley of a bunch of his songs that would go from one to the next and i'm listening to this half asleep and thinking what the hell is am i is time warping Am I like something's happening? I don't know what because he'd go from one song to another, and am I just losing my mind? Because it feels like mm. nothing's like time isn't passing properly because all of a sudden I was listening to one song and it's now another, and I had no idea that he'd done this. Yeah, that <laughs> it's it's very disconcerting. It's like disjointed and a little bit messed up. Like that's that's when you were describing that. That's exactly what I remember feeling like when I was listening to that. Oh, and this is this is sort of um, related to that sort of feeling, and this again has nothing to do with anything except for something that I've been looking at a lot recently. There is um, an interviewer, um, I don't know if you've heard of him, called Nardwar, N A R D W U A R, and his whole shtick is um, he called himself Nardwar the Human Serviette, mm -hmm. and. Um, he does interviews where he does an absolutely insane amount of research and he's got sort of like this um really like bizarre kind of character that he plays mm -hmm. um and so the entire point is that like his, his interview is punctuated with a bunch of gifts that he gives the the person that he's interviewing and like um like interspersed with like random facts about their life so like the um he interviewed uh pharrell one time and just part way through the interview he's just, he just like mentions like you know places that they used to hang out when they were kids or like like old like best friends or like for seth rogan he gave him like a bunch of his yearbooks to look through and right. like found him in his yearbooks um but so just like like really like kind of like oddly specific stuff to know about people and for pharrell he was like so the first time you showed up in a um in print there's like a picture of you and it got smudged and your mom wrote in um <laughs> the newspaper saying like that's not fair my son like you didn't display his picture properly <laughs> and just like totally embarrassed for all with this like incredibly incredibly like specific detail from his past and it's just um it's the same thing that you're talking about where it's like a really kind of like I, and i think it is for the for the um people that he interviews too he does a lot of like hip-hop and rap um right people where it's like this weird out of like like kind of like um 
bizarre experience where there's just this random dude showing up and telling them all these like stories about them as kids or like stuff that they're like how do you know that right or he's like <laughs> he'll he'll like give them like the first half of something and see if they can complete the sentence to see where he's going to like um like to see if like the information that he's figured out about them is important enough that like he can like give them like like he basically does like mad libs like fill in the blanks with them right. for for what he's going to talk about next and he's like pulling records like out of his thing and they're like wait like i didn't know this person made that that's so cool how do you know that they're like wow how did you like um how did you get this you're like just like really weird stuff like he's interviewed like snoop dogg like 10 times or something um and he's just like i i don't even know if i can fully recommend his content because it's so like bizarre um and but it's it's really it's really interesting like i don't even know how much i enjoy watching it it's it's so weird you know what i mean <laughs> i know what you, you mean sometimes it's like watching a train wreck right like yeah. it's not that it's it it brings you joy it's it's you can't stop watching because you don't know what's going to happen next yeah like he's interviewed like canadian political leaders and there's this game that he has called the hip flip challenge and he like has done it just with like various like politicians and i just like i just look at it and i don't like i don't fully know how to process it i'm like i don't know if this is funny or like vaguely obnoxious or like whatever but like so some people like really appreciate his interview style and i was like looking at his wikipedia page and some people have actually like walked out of interviews i don't know because he maybe like made them uncomfortable with like just how much he knew or just different stuff like that um but it's just it's that whole sort of like weird like not kind of fully processed um (laughs) experience that i've been having and so i've i've watched like probably a couple hours of his interviews at this point i'm still not entirely sure how i feel about them (laughs) Yeah, there's a lot of uh, the the. All right, so that whole not sure how I feel about it. Netflix. I would I would recommend it. I think for people yeah. who who are interested by it. Yeah, I would start with the um, interview of Nerd N E R D, okay. which has Pharrell in it, because right. Pharrell is super super impressed by Nardwar. And then there's another interview um, where he interviews Pharrell just by himself a little later, and then Pharrell as sort of like payback or a thank you. Um, it t- turns a table and there's a separate video on another YouTube channel where Pharrell interviews Nardwar yeah. um, and tries to use a similar style. So I think that's a pretty fun kind of wholesome um, set if you want to see any of them, but they're, they're really, they're really weird. So if the idea interests you at all, um, I would recommend watching them. I don't know if I, uh, I'm like giving this recommendation with the expectation that anybody who does will enjoy it. But I think if, if that, <laughs> if that idea interests you, I think it's worth a shot. Okay. Speaking um, of stuff to, maybe recommend that may not necessarily be enjoyable. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so we talked about Titans before, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm watching Second Season of Punisher now. Uh, and so it's something interesting. What occurs to me as I'm watching both and why I think Punisher is a bit more successful, but I think it still fails in a, a few different ways, is because the Punisher doesn't try to stay close to its roots necessarily, where it's a guy dressed up in in this costume right where the titans you know you can really see the origins of the costume in the comic book at least where the origins of the costume has a lot to do with the limitations of the medium where comic books Mm. used to have a limited palette of colors and so you need to make them all distinctive so they'd all have colorful costumes and when you try to make titans dark like that and you don't you have to stay true to the original comic a little bit so that there's still you know that hint of the color in the in the costumes and their appearance yeah. but then when you do that and you try to make it edgy and dark and it's about you know like life and death and demons from another plane yeah it, it loses it like stuff that works in comic books like hawk and dove the that the way they look doesn't work it, they just look kind of goofy oh yeah it's and, the underwear on the outside yes like. and yeah. and um Punisher works better because it doesn't try for that, right? It aims to be dark. It gets a little bit more towards that the, our expectations of what like a gritty kind of, um, you know, grim dark comic book should be. Yeah. And so I think it's a lot more successful that way. I think it's a little bit over the top though, mm. but it works better because it doesn't come from the same kind of root. It's not nearly as I want to say colorful as um, Titans was. That's interesting. I don't think I would have ever put it in kind of context of like character design and like aesthetic, but uh, that, that is definitely a place where stuff could match or not match. And while we're on the topic of Netflix stuff, 
I, I have you seen Russian Doll? I have not. I've seen the uh, trailer for it, which is very profane. <laughs> right, uh, like instantly, almost with like the first like six second, like the let's. Uh, I, oh, I, oh, yeah, I don't yeah, want to. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you, yeah. you, you okay. know, or you don't. But All right. the trailer but for can I say Russian Doll. It is. It starts off a little bit slowly. I don't want to say it's exactly slow burn because it's not. It gets right into it. Yeah. But I was really hooked. Uh, somewhere around the second episode, mm-hmm. and it is, it is such a brilliant mashup of different things. Like there's certain yeah. moments that are funny, so unexpectedly funny, that I was literally laughing out loud. Oh, there were that's some, impressive. Yeah, there were some really. It's a smart show, and it deals with some things. I mean, it's not a spoiler or spoiler alert for the next ten seconds if you haven't seen it yet. But oh, I um, haven't seen it yet. No, so. but they've 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 they've. It's pretty clear that she's reliving this moment, right? Yeah, that's that's what I've heard. I've heard it's like a Groundhog Day esque thing. But it does it because we've seen other times where they've done reliving. Like to me, the best book ever that did this, not because it's necessarily the best written, but because of what it tries to do and what it succeeds in doing is Replay by Ken mm. Grimwood. Yeah. And this does some really interesting things with it where there's enough to flesh it out and the characters and the two the two main actors really sell it and there's some really touching moments and some really... There's times where the, the actors and the, the characters really are so vulnerable mm. and there's these incredible moments of humor and pathos like real life like it's not it doesn't feel staged it feels mm. honest and i was i was so sad when it finished and it had such a satisfying uh finale like the, mm. the final episode was so good yeah. I, I think it's worth seeing it's only i think eight episodes and they're all less than a half hour each so I, I really recommend it. I thought okay, that was, I'll, yeah. I'll have to I'll have to give that a watch. Yeah, yeah. I think I've I've somebody else mentioned they had seen it to me, but I don't remember hearing such a positive opinion from them. I don't remember hearing a bad opinion from them. I just don't remember what they said about it. So, uh, that's that's definitely a pretty great review, though. I think so, what I was surprised the, what really got caught me off guard and I was so surprised was how funny it was. mm Hmm. Like, you listen, it's profane. There's lots of, again, like Punisher for sure is that kind of over the top. There's a lot of uh, swearing. There's a lot of violence. It's pretty graphic. But it, it doesn't balance it properly, I think. Like, it, it's missing a lot because it feels like over, it's over the top. All right, so remember um, the first Avengers movie where um, the Hulk takes Loki and smacks him around? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, and that's that moment of... Like just humor. Yeah, like where it's a total break in tone too. Like it, it's it's such a it's such like an unexpected moment. Right, and there's so many th- there's so many moments like that in, um, in Russian Doll. Clearly, it's a dramatic show. They like use he- um Crimson and Clover for their uh, for the trailer music, don't they? Yes, but that's not actually the most like they they make so many good choices with the music, but that mm. wasn't even the most important part. It is, okay. yeah, I, I would recommend it, but I think it's hard to get into it right away because she is just so, I don't want to say offensive, but she's just so in your face. She's so mm. um, co- uh, abrasive. She's very Course. abrasive. Yeah. That's okay. what I meant. Like, she's like sandpaper. Mm. She's abrasive, but the, the the arc of the whole season, it's... I don't, I don't want to say more for spoiling it, but I really enjoyed it in a way I didn't expect. Okay. Okay. So, Sounds yeah. good. How many more fights we have? It looks like we're coming up. I think we're running out of time. There was here. something else I wanted to mention, but do we have enough time or do we... It's uh, the balance, right? Between... Maybe, maybe talk a little bit about it. You got a couple minutes. Okay. So the other thing I was watching lately has been a bit of YouTube. Mm. And I've been watching this series of videos called... Uh, I think it. I think it's called and about censorship and information control, mm. and they've got a description. Art, so I'm going to read their description. And are these links going to be in the description then? Um, yeah, I can do that. Mm. Okay. So it says, "How do innovations in information technology stimulate new forms of censorship and information control?" This project brings together scholars 
of earlier information revolutions from the printing press through radio and the copy machine with journalists, editors, authors, activists, and other experts on the contemporary information revolution. In a series of nine filmed discussions, these 25 specialists discuss the parallels between past and present information revolutions that illuminate the new forms of censorship and information control which are developing around us and what we can do about them. Mm. The series was organized by Ada Palmer, Corey Doctorow, and Adrian Jones, and produced by the University of Chicago with support from the Department of History, the Neubauer Collegium on Culture and Society, the Institute on the Formation of Knowledge, and the Nicholson Center for British Studies. Okay. So they're not short. They're each maybe a couple hours long, unless you watch oh, wow. the uh, okay. highlights. They, they have a shorter highlights version, I think like, you know, 10, 15 minutes or something, but they're yeah. each two hours long. And what strikes me the most about this and why they're so good are the things that I'm taking away from it, but also how it's, they're basically University of Chicago lectures and yeah. they are so much like convention panels. Mm. So these are really smart people who have a whole bunch of knowledge and they come up with um, relevant examples of things that they're discussing because they just know them. Yeah. Like really oh, interesting like stories. Yeah. Okay, and they're like cool. the best kind of convention panels, only it's not about science fiction and fantasy or writing or the kind of ideas in books, but just this idea of censorship. Mm. And even, I mean, I've gotten through two videos so far. That's about four hours of um, watching it. Okay, and that's a lot. For me, it is. I hardly ever watch um, media on YouTube like that. I watch a ton of media on YouTube, but yeah, no, for you, that's a ton. Yeah. So one of the things that they came to, and it's once they said it, it was just so obvious, self-censorship is the most pervasive kind of censorship and the most oh, effective. that totally makes sense. Right. So that the, the, the related idea is that eradicating ideas isn't always the goal of censorship. Yeah, because you're not eradicating your own ideas when you're self-censoring. Right. It's Well, and the, the whole idea of the censorship sometimes is just to, like a, flex, a flexing of power. Like they're show, demonstrating mm. their power to show you that they are censoring to make you scared to self-censor so that you don't want to get, mm. uh, you know, run a, a, a skew, a scans. You don't want to end scans. up... Yeah, of of the the established um, acceptable opinions. Yeah. So you end up deciding. Oh, so this is the last fight. And mm. it, it is see when we faced Catwoman with the Batman Ninja team, she was so much more dangerous because she could uh, revive twice. Basically, this team is not going to be that big a problem. I don't think. And famous last words, right? We'll get knocked out. Mm -hmm. um, but what was so cool was, I mean, it's. Again, it's a lecture. It's university. Yeah. But it's something that's interesting and relevant to... almost. If you're watching this on YouTube, it's relevant to everybody who's watching this or, or yeah. listening to this, right? Mm -hmm. And they come up with such interesting... And when they say it, it seems so obvious. But such interesting ideas about censorship. It, it pulls together all the best things that I love about um, convention panels. Mm. So you get to listen in on a conversation from really smart people talking about an idea and it it's cultivated, like it's a conversation cultivated where you, they don't end up in the weeds like we do, right? Where you they end up go, wandering <laughs> off on a bunch of stuff. But yeah, they, because uh, nobody lets them. We, we have too much power here. <laughs> uh, we're not we're not restricted enough in our format to, to stay on topic and nobody makes <laughs> us. People reward us for it. Yeah. So... Um, no, I, so if you get a chance to watch that, maybe start with, and, and uh, so I'm just going to, what's the the thing you say about how you might have a potential conflict of interest? It's not really, but I supported this um, as a Kickstarter where they were um, making books about the display that they had at University of Chicago about things that mm. were censored. And mm. so I supported them. I got the book and that's part of the reason why I watched the video. But now that I've watched it, I'm so glad I supported them. Yeah, that's not exactly a conflict of interest because that's you buying something and then liking it. <laughs> I guess that's true. Support supporting it on Kickstarter feels a little bit different, but um, what you did was paid for a product, enjoyed the product, and then told other people to uh, consume it. But th which that's is, which right, is so more of just which is more of just uh, fandom for stuff that you have to buy. Yeah. All right. So, but it's not conflict of interest. You know when people have to say something about how you know, before they go into it, that they got this copy as a review copy and they didn't pay for it. What is that? That's a disclaimer, right? So that's, that's my disclaimer. disclaimer. But your, your disclaimer is that you did pay for it. Yeah, I did pay for it. And I, I'm totally... Is, I purchased this with my own money. Um, yeah, but you can watch it for free. It's available to everybody on YouTube. So I supported it because I thought it was a cool idea and I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Okay. That's good. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> and I think we're out of time now. <laughs> we we are out of time. Okay. Uh, we have a Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash bdckr, or clicking on our picture in the bottom right corner at the end of this video. But more importantly, we have patrons, some of which who take advantage of their uh, Patreon tiers, such as user iProfit or iProfit3 on YouTube. Uh, so there's a there's a message and this is a message, but it's also a challenge. So the message is as follows something a bit different this week since it's been an Oscar fiesta recently I would like both of you to try and pronounce Maharshala's full name don't cheat and so What follows is a full name and I think I will try to pronounce it first and then I will let you try to pronounce it afterwards uh, It's Maharshala Hashbaz Ali Gilmore. I <laughs> definitely choked on that a little bit, but do you wanna do you wanna give your run at it? Oh, I meant to. <laughs> Maher Shalal Hashbaz right. Ali Gilmore is my is my. Right, final I think that's it. I think you're hitting guess. all the the problem with big names where there's a lot of um, uh, syllables in it mm -hmm. is grouping it together properly, right? Mm -hmm. And then stumbling over or missing some because it's not an obvious combination. So sometimes when you look at something, you even see it. You don't even have to look at it and know that there's certain syllables in it. Yeah. Because... So why don't you why don't you give it a right. give it a run? Uh, so Maharshalal Hashbit. Uh... <laughs> Sorry. You take it one more one more again. Maharshalal Hashbaz Ali Gilmore. Okay. So there we go. That is our. Uh... Is that your? Is that your? That's my I don't final, want to say answer. final answer. Yeah. 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 I feel a little bit bad because I I don't want to feel like we're making fun of the name. Uh, because it's not, because mm -hmm. clearly that's one of the things that's actually important to me when I meet somebody, if they've got sort of a non-typical kind of name, I want to learn how to mm -hmm. pronounce it properly, because it, to me it's a sign of kind of respect, right? Mm -hmm. We're at least making the the attempt. And my my problem is a lot of the, unlike a lot of the words that I don't know, yeah. um, I, the words I don't know I tend to read first, and names I don't know I tend to hear first, so I usually mm -hmm. have the advantage of having learning a name phonetically before I actually learn mm -hmm. how to spell it. And this is the exact opposite. So I feel like I'm really struggling with this. So I feel bad about that. Yeah. So, but there we go. That's our, that's our best effort. And uh, we should give a huge thank you to all of our patrons. That's mm -hmm. console peasant, Eddie G and Edwin Felix, who are supporting us at the highest last word tier. I profit who is supporting us at the, your message here tier and Sean Farrell and Daniel Simonson, who are supporting us on the credited level, not to mention Laszlo Georgiades and Chris Wolf, who are supporting us on the gratitude tier. So thank you guys all so much for your support. And thank you to all of you so much for watching, listening, consuming this, However, it gets to you. We will see you guys next time. Komoda. Komoda.